talking about something that if you're from the South, you probably know, but it's the stuff that you wear and in things that you eat. It's this plant right here and it's called cotton. Cotton is a natural fiber and it's one of the oldest fibers to ever be grown and harvested. Cotton dates back to over 7,000 years ago. Cotton is not native to the United States. The first cotton seed ever planted here was in Florida in 1556. But cotton is native to Africa, Australia, South America, India, and Mexico. And what do all these countries have in common? Yep, they all have warm climates. Cotton is planted in the spring and harvested in the fall. Let's go out in the field and take a look to see how they actually harvest the cotton. I'm here with Matt and he's going to tell us about cotton. I'm Matt Haney with Haney Farms. And today we're picking cotton in Limestone County. Uh, the cotton is really good this year. Cotton picker runs through the crop and, and harvests it. It rolls it up into this roll. This roll weighs about 5,000 pounds. There's probably around four and a half bales of cotton in that round roll there. My job is hack the cotton, the round rolls, I put them in the, a line, I use GPS to do that. Wow, that was so neat. Did you see how they used three different machines? One of them picked the cotton and made it into the bale. The other one cut down the cotton stalks that have already been picked. And the last one moved the cotton bales around the field. But a long time ago, they didn't have these machines. So why don't we use the timerama to go back in time and to see what this looked like. And go! Whoa! We're back in the 1700s. And in the 1700s, southern states used to grow tobacco. But that was a really hard and labor-intensive crop. So in the late 1700s, they switched to cotton which was also extremely hard because not only did you have to pick the cotton, but you had to get all the little bitty tiny seeds out of it. And it could take a whole day to clean one pound of cotton. And then in 1793, one man named Eli Whitney changed the view of cotton. He created a machine that would take the little seeds out of cotton. And thanks to him, cotton is a booming textile industry. So let's go back to the present day to see what a cotton gin looks like now. Hi everyone, I'm here at a cotton gin and I'm going to be talking to Mr. Smith and I'm going to give you guys a tour and see how this all works. Where the cotton enters the gin plant, they bring it to the stage you know, on our yard down here. And they just truck to pick it up off the yard and bring it to the it on the feeder. It's just metering it into the plant. It really, we haven't done anything to it yet, other than break it out of the big block that it's in. And this is a modern day version of the invention that Eli Whitney made. This separates the cotton lint from the cotton seed. And the cotton lint goes through a series of tubes to become a huge cotton bale, whereas the cotton seed goes down into a warehouse. Once the cotton lint has been separated, it is pushed into these giant squares. And then workers have to put the squares into boxes and bag them so the producer can ship them off. All of our seed goes into the cattle market for cattle seed. Either dairy cattle or beef cattle. The overheads will only hold about three trailer truckloads of cotton seeds. So once we get those full, then we'll just switch it out and blow the seed in here. And this is what cotton seed looks like. Each one of those fibers that's in cotton is actually growing out of that seed. They're pretty hard. They don't want to give up their fibers. It's pretty hard to get them off. So once you, we actually have mechanical saws that, that cut the lint off the seed, but that's what you have left when you get when you get the lint off of it. That's that's the twigs and branches and anything that's not lint or not seed. That's where it goes in that compost pile. And they take their phone just like yours and scan that module tag. They have an app on their phone that enables them to do that. And once they scan that tag, 
and it gives us a GPS location of exactly where it's set. That module will be sitting within six feet of where that dot is right there in the field. So when we send the trucks, we tell them there's four modules sitting right there on the end of that field. Before, uh, we, we had, this is our module book. And I don't know how far this thing goes back, but the producer would call on the telephone. This goes back to 2012. Uh, on 10-6, Jesse D. Farm called in three modules on Shaw Road. And that's how we used to have to do it. We just had to figure out where his field was at on Shaw Road when we sent the trucks to pick them up. Uh, but now, this is 2015, and you see how many modules that we have called in <laughs> that, that aren't on this system. Now that we see how they take the little seeds out of cotton, what happens to the cotton after that? Well, the producer of the cotton sells it to a textile industry, and they make thread out of it for your sheets and your towels and your shirts and pretty much everything. Do you remember those pesky little cotton seeds? Well, those are either sold to a oil industry, which makes it into cottonseed oil, or like the cotton gin we saw today, it was stored and used as feed for cattle. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed the journey of the little cotton plant. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to the channel so you can see videos every Wednesday. Also, in the links down below, I have a link to www.bringysmartback.com, which has a lesson plan on this video and all the other videos. Also, I have a link down to the Pinterest account, which has a board on this video and all the other videos. And I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye! Bye.